This is a twin star telescope optical tube assembly. Um, it is six inch on the top for the aperture and the focal length is 1,400 millimeters or 1.4 meters. Now this is a Newtonian short tube, uh, optical tube, and I do not recommend you buy one, although if it's on the used market, you might do what I did. I bought the um, Opatron Azimuth um, go-to mount with tracking for 250 bucks, and I got this tube for free along with it. Um, so the main issue with this tube is that they have a spherical lens in the bottom, which is okay, you know, that's what Newton used, but they, it's not a long tube, it's a short tube. And so to get the 1.4 meter um, focal length, you can see it's much less than a meter, um, they essentially are hiding inside the focusing tube, a Barlow tube, that basically takes the path and doubles the path for you. Um, one benefit of this is that the spherical aberrations from the spherical mirror um, are pushed outside of your field of view mostly. Um, the downside is, depending on the quality of those lenses in there, it may not have a very good quality overall. Uh, so this mirror does not come center marked. Now you should never, ever, ever do this to a Newtonian tube because the fancy ones the mirror clips don't actually retain the mirrors um, and instead will drop them out the front because they rely on gravity to do that. This isn't a fancy one, it's a nice cheap one, the clips hold that mirror in tight, maybe too tight. So the mirror holder has three pairs of screws, six total. Three of the screws go into a threaded here and they hold it on. The other three screws just kind of butt up against this pad and by adjusting them, you can say how far away it sits up. So to remove it, you need to find the screws that unscrew and pull out of the mirror bracket. So basically they have holes in the mirror bracket. Um, and unscrew them all, and then you use the other screws to just pull the whole thing straight up. If you need to take this ring off, you can take these side screws out at that point to get them out. Um, it's pretty tight. The mirror brushes up against these three guys here, and so you really have to do it straight up and straight back down to get it in. The easy solution is just to put the mirror face down on a piece of paper and trace around it, but you don't want to touch the mirror if you don't have to, right? Take a circle of paper the exact same size as the mirror, fold it in quarters to get the center point in the creases, cut a little hole out, set it on the mirror very carefully, dot with a marker in the center point, take a white um, three-hole punch sticker, reinforcement sticker, and center that over your mark. Don't worry, it won't interrupt the view because it's in the shadow of your secondary. Um, and that way you can actually see the center of this mirror. I'm using a piece of tape that continues on to the top piece here to make sure I get the same set of screws and the same tabs in the same spot. So I need to get this blue tape matching up with there. Now getting it back in is even harder than taking it out because as I say, that mirror is very tight against those tabs and you have to basically get it perfectly straight in or kind of get part of the mirror past and then inch the rest through. It's, I've never done this in less than a minute. So we will time lapse the heck out of this. And I did have to push a little there, you know, more than I would like on a delicate piece of uh, scientific apparatus here, but it did go in. Um, and then you can verify that these screw holes line up. I went ahead and put these holding screws down pretty far, but there's still a gap there, such that if I tighten these adjustment screws, it can go up and down a little bit. Um, these guys are all the way out. That's basically the way I found them. Um, I have put a white sharpie mark on the adjustment screws so I can keep the two of them straight in my head.